Hi, and welcome to Mary 1840 St. Louis Adult Quilt Experience tutorial number two. I'm Susan, and this is an episode of Susan Stanley Stitch in Time. I'm glad you're joining me today, whether you're watching and stitching, whether you're participating, if you're using a sewing machine, or if you're trying these 1840s methods, you're all welcome, and I'm so glad you're here. Last time on tutorial number one, we looked at how Mary would have cut out her patches and how she would have sewn two patches together to create her blocks. And in this quilt, there are 24 fabrics and 12 blocks. And so we will have now units of two patches like this. that we're going to take and put together to make a four patch. And today that's what we're going to do. So let's get started. Let's take a look at the materials and supplies you will need to do patchwork in an 1840s experience. This is what likely would have been available at that time. You'll need a pencil, You'll need a pin cushion with your number nine cruel work needle. You'll need your thread, which is going to be the 103 silk, and I've wrapped it in the papers. You'll need a thread waxer. a thimble of your choosing. You'll need pins. And I'm gonna take three out and get them ready in my pin cushion. Take them out of the pin papers so they're ready to go. Then I'm gonna put them right back in here because they are so valuable. You'll need your tin template for tracing and cutting your shapes. You'll need your Bristol paper template. You'll need some dressmaker shears. All right, both sides of the four patch have been pieced. So I have two, two patches. They're finger pressed and they're, they're pretty secure. They're not going anywhere. And so now to to create the four patch, we will put the fabrics on opposing sides. And then we're going to lay them together, being really careful of the center. We want, we want to make sure that that center goes in opposing directions. And then we're not going to stitch over it. We want to be careful. All right, and we're going to do the same thing, but this time we have to butt the Bristol paper up against our seam. So get it in there, make sure there's some space. And you're saying, Susan, that's kind of sloppy and there's a lot of extra fabric. We can trim that later, but likely Mary would have had the same situation. So let's crease that, crease it at the top, crease it at the side, so we get our nice little corner X, and then we'll come over here. Now we want the top point to go across, so here we'll crease that, and you can see some of the creases from the initial stitching are still there, and I think we can trust those. Okay. All right, we've got our crease for our stitching and we can put pins in at the beginning. Middle, I'm gonna lift up that seam allowance, 
put it right in there where the X is. And then at the end. All right. And now we're ready to stitch and we're going to start stitching just like we did for our two patch. Hopefully our thread's long enough. We might need another piece if, if not. I'm going to go in, take out that pin, take a couple stitches forward, a couple stitches back, and Mary would have been watching her siblings, her older siblings, her friends in school, her mom, her grandma, anyone who was stitching, she would have picked up a lot of these techniques just from watching. Okay, and looks like we're good. So we're just gonna keep stitching all the way across until we get to the middle. All right, we're almost to the middle here. So we're gonna go right up to that seam allowance, right up to that pin, right up to the point where the middle meets. We're gonna come up before, we're not gonna go through the seam allowance. We're gonna take a back stitch. I'm gonna take out our pin. Now we're going to go through the seam allowance to the other side, to the corner where the crease and the stitching, the crease from the top and the stitching from the side meet. We're going to take a back stitch. We're going to go through, we're going to turn our fabric over and we're going to go through to where the stitching and the crease on the top meet. We're going to take a back stitch. This is going to secure our block. We're going to go through. Now, would Mary, little Mary, have done this? Maybe, maybe not. She might have just sewn straight across. It just depends on who was teaching her. Take a back stitch. And now we're going to go through to the top, right at that point where the stitching and the, and the stitching meet. We're going to come out right where we started. And now we're going to go through the seam allowance again. We're not going to stitch it down. We're going to go through and continue stitching to the other side. Okay. Let's take a closer look at what we're doing when we're putting our two patches together to make our four patch. Let's take a closer look. So I've started stitching and I'm about to get to the center and this is the part that we're gonna take a closer look at. So we're gonna go all the way up to that pin, stitching a couple of stitches on the creased line, taking a back stitch, getting all the way up to that pin. Okay, my needle is coming out, and so right at the pin, so I'm taking the pin out. Okay, now this is what I wanna show you up close and personal. This seam allowance does not get stitched down. We are going to put our needle in 
and we're staying on the top. We're not going through to the back. We're staying on the top. We're going from the top corner crease to the top corner crease under the seam allowance. We're not going to have a red thread going over the top of that seam allowance. Do you see the needle is under the seam allowance. We're coming out on the other side. All right. Now we're going to go back in that same area, same spot, not you don't have to be exactly in the same hole. And we are now going to go to the other side. We're going to go to the back. We're going around and around the center to make it secure. All right, so our needle is coming out. Oops, we're off. I'm off. It needs to come out right at the top of that stitching. In the back, okay? And we're gonna pull that. Okay, now we're working on the back. We're on the back from where we started. We just came through to the back. We're gonna go into that hole. We're staying on the back. We're going across to the other side of the back. We're not tacking down the seam allowance. We're going under the seam allowance. Watch as my thread pulls through. Okay, that seam allowance is still free and clear. Okay, now we're going to go in that hole from the back up again to the front, and this is where we started to go around and around the center. All right, we're back where we started. We've secured our center. We're going to take, we're going to go back through again to the other side on the top, not tacking down the seam allowance. See that? And now we're ready to stitch across this crease to the end to finish our block. We're going to take a back stitch to make it nice and secure. another one and now we'll stitch to the end three stitches forward this makes this will make sure that our center is not going to pull apart Okay, and we're going to take three to four stitches. And then back stitch. Three to four stitches. Just weaving the fabric onto the needle. And a back stitch until we hit that pin, just the intersection of our creases. Take a back stitch. Take a couple of back stitches actually. And then come out. Take out our pin, clip the thread. And let's open our block. All right, we've got a nice four patch. It's a little wonky. It needs to be trimmed down here. I think I, I think I didn't trim that side. I didn't trim on that line. So there we go. And it's gonna be nice and have a lot of integrity. It's not pulling apart. 
the center meets up really nicely. We've got our first block. Okay, so you can finger press your block if you'd like and just let it just let it go the way it wants to go. You can take an iron to it. If you're not doing the 1840s experience, it's up to you. But if you're doing the 1840s experience, you're likely going to want to finger press this and just set it aside. To make the Mary 1840 St. Louis doll quilt, you need to have 12 of these. If you would like to follow the, the coloration that I did, you can look at the picture of the original, the one that I designed. And if you're using your own fabrics, have fun with it. I'd love to see what you do. I hope you're noticing that your skills are improving and your stitches are becoming more confident and regular as you go along in this journey. If this is your first time doing hand piecing and patchwork, um, be kind to yourself. I'm so proud of you and, and I'm so uh, excited to share this journey with you. We will be talking more about Mary's life in the Stitched Story episodes and on my floss tube I will highlight some of the tools and give you a little background and history on those. Um, these sewing methods are timeless and, and I find them just fascinating and I find them a recipe for success. Uh, people have been pa patching things together for warmth and comfort for centuries and I think we can learn from them. So your homework for this time is to sew all your two patches into four patches and by the end of our next, but when we meet again you should have 12 four patches. On our next episode number three we're going to look at putting those four patches together into rows. Thanks for joining me today. Bye. We're going to take a look now at putting together a four patch for somebody who's never done anything like this before and maybe it would help everybody. So let's take a really in-depth look at what we're doing. We have two two patches and I've sewn these together using red thread. Now if you look carefully, and I think this shows up just fine on the video, you can see the folded line all the way across. You can actually see it all the way around because now we've pressed with our finger around our Bristol paper in almost every direction. We're going to look really closely at this point right here where the top of the stitching meets the folded line. And then we're going to go under the seam allowance to the other side and we're going to deal with where the top of the stitching meets the folded line right there. All right, we're going to pay attention to that on both of our pieces. So let's put our, our patch down. Now we don't want the same fabrics on the same side. I don't think you want to do that. It's a, you've done all this work. You want to separate them so that you have this nice diagonal effect. So you want to lay them out face up so you can see what's going on. You're going to take them and hug the right sides to each other. The right sides are now hugging and all you see are the wrong sides. If you remember that from our last video, these are the wrong sides. Under here are the right sides. We have our seam allowance on the top and we have a seam allowance on the back. And we talked about that in the first video as well. We have our cut edge. All right. 
I am going to draw on these pieces of fabric so that it makes it super clear what we're doing in this stitching together the center. Okay, that's crucial to keep this from being loose and flappy. I've drawn the names of each piece on to the fabric itself just to make this really clear. And so we're dealing with the top right or the front, the top left or the front, the bottom right or the back, the bottom left or the back, all right? We're going to start from the top and we have our pieces put together, right sides together, just like we did before. I've also drawn in where the folded lines meet. And in some cases, it's a stitched line meeting the folded line. The stitched line is meeting the folded line. In other cases, it's just two folded lines meeting. Why is that important? This is where we start stitching. We stitch on the folded line to here. And then we're going to do a dance. And I want you to think of it as a dance around the maypole. This maypole is the center. And what we're doing is we're securing each side of the seam allowance. We're doing the top right, top left, bottom right, and bottom left. And we're securing them with a back stitch. And that way our center will stay closed and tight and look really nice and good, clean and crisp. First thing you need to do, get your thimble. I like, I just wear my thimble. It's just comfortable, I'm used to it. Uh, you need to thread your needle. I'm using red thread so you can see what we're doing. Very nice and clear, so it's very clear for you. I am going to run the thread through the waxer. And I usually, I always thread my needle first. Mostly, I don't know, it's just a habit, but I think I just don't want that residue of wax up in the needle eye as, as much as possible. So I just, it just seems to be why. I don't know if there's a re really a reason or if it matters. Um, and then I pull off the X, the residue. Okay, so now my needle's ready. Now I'm gonna pin my piece. We're going to start here on the top right and where the where the X is formed. We're going to go right into the middle. Pick up your piece in your hands. We're going to go into the X on the top and we're going to go into the X on the bottom. We have not hit the X on the bottom, so I'm going to move this over a little bit so that we're coming out the X on the bottom. Okay, looks good. Turn it over and we're going to secure our pin. We're going to come down to the middle and we're going to pin where the stitched, the red stitching line meets the fold line. And if you, if you were careful when you were doing your fold on your Bristol paper, that point where the paper meets the end or beginning of the stitching is going to line right up with the new fold. So you can see that that's what's happening. And that will be happening on all four side, four pieces of fabric. Okay. All the way. That's something to check and really firm up on your piece. Okay, we're gonna pin the center and we don't want the seam, allow, the seam allowance involved. We don't want these pieces pinned. We want them out of our way. So we're going to take the one in the back and brush it off to the left and the one on the top and brush it off to the left and, and just pinch it right there. And now we're going to pin where the red stitching on the side meets the fold line across the top. 
Here's the fold line across the top and here's the red stitching on the side. We're going to make sure the pin is coming out at that same place on the back and look at that, it's coming out just where we want it. Right where the red stitching meets the fold line. Right where that X is. All right, now we're going to secure our pin. Now for this you can use more pins, you don't have to, but I think if you're, if you're, this is new to you, I think it's probably a good idea. Now we need to move the seam allowance right here and we need to get it out of the way, but we're going on to the left side, so we need to move the seam allowance to the right. So let's push it back to the right on the top and push it back to the right on the bottom and pinch it. And now we're pinching it going the opposite way. We're going to take our pin and we're going to pin right where the red stitched line meets the top fold line on the left hand side. We're going to put our pin right in there, right in that X. We're going to check it on the back. Ooh, spot came right out, came right out on the X. Okay, we want to keep our seam allowance out of the way, keep it out of the way, continue to keep it out of the way. All right, that one's secured. Now we're going to go to the end. We're going to pin the X where the fold is meeting on, on either point. Now, you can, you can sort of see here where I'm not, it's not, I didn't get my Bristol paper exactly in the middle and it, and it doesn't matter because my area between the fold lines, which represents the Bristol paper, which represents what's going to show on your block, it's what all we care about and it's just right. It's just what needs to be. So we go into the X here and we go, Oh, we're off a tiny bit on that, so let's lift the the fabric from the from the underneath and lift it and then place it back down on the pin. And now we're on the X. Turn it back over and pin it. Okay, and now we're ready to stitch. Now, if you would like, if you're more comfortable, you can put pins at the midpoint between each of each little square. So that would just be on the fold line on the top right to the fold line on the bottom left. See where that pin's coming out? We'll pin it. And then we're going to put a pin in from the fold line on the top left to the fold line on the bottom right and pin it. Oh, did it? My pin must have fallen out. Let's repin that. Okay, we need a pin on the other side of the seam allowance. There we go. All right, so our seam allowance is still free. It's not, it's not pinned down. And I do think this is a really good way, way to, to learn, and, but if you are more comfortable stitching it all the way across, or if you're using a machine, it'll, it'll be different. All right, we're going to start this just like we did a two patch, exactly like we did. We're going to go in at the cross where the fold lines meet on that corner. We're going to take a tiny stitch. You can make a knot if you'd like or you can just make a back stitch. Pull it through. We can take out our pin, put it in the pin cushion. We can go down in the middle of that first back stitch and we're going to start weaving the fabric onto our needle. One little tiny stitch, two, three. And now use your thimble, push it through. 
The thimble isn't needed, isn't doing a ton of work right now. This is not heavy stitching. This is lightweight fabric. We, we just have two layers. It's, it's not, but it's a good way to start getting used to it because when you need it, you want, you want to have it on your finger and you want it to feel comfortable. We've done three stitches. Now we're doing a back stitch. We're going out through the bottom and scooping up to the top because we're doing the sewing method now. We're going to try that. We're not going to poke and stab. We're going we're gonna to try to move past the poke and stab. We're going to weave one. Take out the pin. The needle's out. Two. Three. Now if, this, if you're having trouble with this, go back to the first tutorial. Go back to the section for first stitches for those who have never taken a stitch and really work on a running stitch. Now do you see how that's sometimes getting caught up? That is totally normal with hand sewing. Mostly, uh, most of it's happening because I'm stopping. If I kept going, it, this, wouldn't, this wouldn't be tangling up like that. I want my seam allowances now to be out of my way. I'm moving up towards the pin, so I'm gonna make sure those seam allowances are leaning to the left. All right, I'm gonna to try to take stitches up to this pin, and when I get to the pin, I'm gonna start my dance step, and my dance step is stomp three times. Stomp, stomp, stomp is a back stitch. All right, so we're gonna do stitch, stitch. Okay, we only got two stitches out of that. I'm coming out right at the pin. Up, oh, and of course I have to rethread my needle because that happens. Okay, I've threaded my needle. I'm going to take out the pin that is on the right. I'm going to we're going to go around the maypole now. We're going to take a back stitch right, back stitch top right. We're going to lift the seam allowance. We're just dealing on the top layer. We're going to go from that X on the top right to the X on the top left. I did not poke through to the back. All right, the seam allowance is standing up. All right, going to do our dance step of making a back stitch. Stomp, stomp, stomp. Make your back stitch. We're just making one back stitch. All right. Now we're getting ready to go from the top to the bottom or the back. So we're going to put our needle in right where the pin is. That will, and we're going to turn this over just like this. Do you see my needles poking out? It's ready, it's ready for me. Okay. Now we're on the bottom or the back. We're, we're at the center. We're making, we're going to do our, our dance step again. Stomp, stomp, stomp. Make a back stitch. There's our back stitch. Okay. We didn't, we, we didn't do anything with the seam allowance. It's still, it's still right there. Not, not held down at all. Now we're on the bottom or the back and we're going to go through under the seam allowance. We're not going through to the front or the top. We're just strictly going from the bottom right to the bottom left. We're gonna go right in at that X on the bottom right and come right out. And look at that. Those little stitched lines are meeting right up, right there. Isn't that fabulous? That's exactly what it's supposed to do. Okay, we're going to come out on the bottom left now. We haven't, we have not stitched down the seam allowance. It's still free. Okay, 
take our dance step. We're on we're on another side of the maypole. We're gonna go stomp, 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 take a back stitch. All right, now we're going from the bottom left to the top. We're gonna, we've got our seam allowances now facing the right. They're off to the side, they're out of the way. I'm not gonna go up through this seam allowance. Make sure it's out of your way so you don't poke it. Go right up in that X, right there. And let's turn it back over to the top. We're right where we started on the top, where we took our first dance step, our first back stitch. So we've gone all the way around the center. Yay! All right, we're gonna go under the seam allowance one more time and push, you know, make sure these are not, just go under the seam allowance, come out from the top right to the top left And we are ready to finish our block. So let's take a back stitch and let's do our, and start going. So I took a back stitch. My needle is already, has already taken the back stitch, even though I haven't pulled the thread through. Okay, pardon me, I just bumped the camera. All right, we're gonna take three stitches, weaving them on, two, three, push them through. Take a back stitch. I haven't pulled the thread through, but I've already positioned my needle for that back stitch. It's going to become a back stitch as soon as I pull the thread through. One, two, three. Those will become stitches as soon as I pull the thread through. I'm gonna get that out of the way. All right. Take a back stitch. We don't, I haven't pulled it through yet, but it's ready. The needle is doing its job and the thread will follow. One, two, three. We're gonna come out. Now I'm lifting this up the, the easier, you know, the, the more you can keep this down and flat, the easier time you're going to have. I'm trying to get this up nice and close to the camera. I'm going to take one more stitch to come right out at the pin. Get rid of the pin. And then I'm going to take a back, couple of back stitches. Take my needle out, and our block is done. Let's see how we did. Let's see how the center looks. Okay, it looks good. So the goal is to have nice little crisp, a nice crisp meetup, where you make a nice X, where you see a nice X right here in your seam, in your seam. You've made your first block. Congratulations.